When I was a teenager and living at home, it could be a sheet that you roll up and hide under the bed and pull out when you are ready to work with it. What's up witches? I'm Allie the Bronx Witch and if you're new to my channel I make videos about Wicca, the religion, witchcraft, the practice, and I do weekly tarot readings. And in this video I want to talk to you guys a little bit about your magical altar. And specifically, I want to talk about the way that Wiccans set up their altars because it's the type of altar that I know best. So first of all, what is an altar? Simply put, an altar is a space or area that you have set aside and designated as spiritually significant to you. This can be a place of honor and reverence. It can be a place of meditation. It can be a place where you do magical workings, rituals, and cast spells. Altars have been used for spiritual and magical practices for literally thousands of years and they're present in just about every culture, religious and spiritual tradition. There are also many different types of altars and they all serve different purposes. You can have altars that are for ancestral honoring, altars that are set up to honor or uh, worship a particular deity. You can have an altar that is set up for spell casting. But in this video, we're gonna be talking specifically about the Wiccan working altar. This is the altar that a Wiccan uses to conduct rituals and to cast spells. As with pretty much anything that I teach you, I always wanna stress the importance of understanding that there really are no rules here. There are some general principles that are traditional to the Wiccan way of setting up and working with an altar, but it's really important to me that I stress the importance of you creating an altar space that makes sense for you and that works with the tools and the resources at your disposal. I don't want you going out and buying some elaborate piece of furniture or filling it up with a whole bunch of fancy expensive tools that don't actually mean something to you just because someone told you that it's the way to set up an altar. Your altar could be a cardboard box. Your altar could be your nightstand. Or in my case, as it was for many years when I was a teenager and living at home, it could be a sheet that you roll up and hide under the bed and pull out when you are ready to work with it. Your altar could be as big as an entire wall in your room, or it could literally fit inside of an Altoids can. And I encourage you to check out some of the YouTube videos that I will link up above about how to make tiny little portable altars because they're super practical, they're great for travel, and also they're just really, really cute. So first of all, what can your altar be made out of? Like I said, your altar can be made out of truly anything anything that works for you. So a box of some kind is great. If you have a table or nightstand that you can designate to the use of an altar, that's fantastic. You could use a shoe box. Um, as I said, when I was in high school and I was living at home, I couldn't set up a permanent altar in my room. So I had all of my altar tools just inside of a sheet that I would tie up and I would just pull it out and open it up on the floor when I wanted to work with it. So, um, you know, work with what you've got and make do with the space that you have. Uh, your altar is not more or less spiritually significant than anyone else's based on its size or its location or you know the complication of its setup. 
The one thing that I will tell you that you might want to take into consideration is that whatever this item is or wherever this area is, it should be a place of reverence and respect. And so I would recommend that if you are using something like a box or a portion of a table for your altar, uh, that you only use that box or that portion of the table for your altar workings. It shouldn't be a place where you leave your empty cereal bowl or throw your clothes when you're done at the end of the day or, um, you know, charge your phone. It should be a space that is just used for that spiritual significance. Now, let's talk about altar tools. As I said with altars and as I said in that video, there is no tool that you have to have in order to create magic. You are the magic. Remember what magic is. Magic is the act of setting an intention and taking your own energy, harnessing and directing that energy outward so that you can manifest or create something in the physical world that didn't previously exist. So the only thing you need to create magic is your own energy and your own clarity of intention. But there are some tools that have become commonplace in magical practice or that have symbolism or relationships that help witches to uh, vibrate on the frequency of the thing it is that they are trying to attract or that help them to pay special honor or homage to the spiritual beings that they work with, whether those are ancestors, uh, angels, or deities. When it comes to the practice of Wicca specifically, uh, most Wiccans would say that when it comes down to tools, aside from yourself, which is the most important and only necessary tool, the sort of next group of tools that most Wiccans would want to have present on their altar would be the representation of the five elements, fire, air, earth, water, and spirit. This is because most Wiccans, regardless of their tradition or what pantheon of deities they work with, all of us recognize the importance and the significance of elemental earth energies. We all tap into those energies to help to change our own vibrations to accomplish what it is we're trying to accomplish. So if you would like to set up an altar in the Wiccan way, that's basically where you should start. Representations of the five elements can really be anything that makes sense to you. But if you check out my video on tools, I talk about the most commonly used representations as well as some substitutes or some alternatives that you might wanna consider. Besides the representations of the five elements, there are also magical tools that have become commonplace in the ways in which Wiccans uh, usually set up their working altar. These are items like the chalice, your athame, uh, and a bell or a crystal. These are items that relate to uh, the god or the goddess, that relate to various elements on earth, but also serve purposes in ritual or in spell work. And again, I don't want to make this video too lengthy, so I definitely recommend checking out the video on magical tools so you can get a more complete list of those items. In addition to the tools that you will want to include on your altar, it's also important that you designate some sort of empty or open space on your altar. The type of altar that I'm talking about right now is a working altar. So this is a place where you would be casting spells, creating potions, saying invocations, or in other ways just working and, and doing magical work. So for that reason, you will need at least a little bit of space so that you can get things done. If your altar is completely filled from corner to corner with items and tools and representations of elements, then you won't have enough space to actually get things done. And uh, that could be a little inconvenient or problematic when it's time for you to actually put a spell together or put a potion together. The next thing that I will tell you about altars that are set up in the Wiccan way is that our working altars are not typically set up in a way to specifically honor any one deity. That type of altar is usually something that is separate 
from our working altar. Uh, if you work with a deity that you want to show specific honor and uh, reverence to, uh, then you would create an altar somewhere else that uh, did that or served that purpose. That altar, again, can be as small or as large, as complicated or as plain as makes sense for you and as works for you and your deity. Typically, it would include perhaps a statue or a photo of the deity, uh, offerings that you would leave for them, and any other representations that made sense for that deity on a working altar. You usually don't really see um, too many symbols of a specific deity. Rather, what you will see are representations of god energy and goddess energy generally. The representation that you choose to represent god or goddess energy might take the form of a specific deity, but the purpose of the altar is not to worship that deity. So for example, you might use a statue of Hecate to represent goddess energy, but this altar is not for the purpose of worshiping or honoring Hecate. I hope that makes sense. So once you've decided what your altar is going to be made out of and whether or not it's going to be a permanent setup or a temporary setup, and you've gathered your tools and your representations of the elements, now comes the question of how do we actually set that up? And again, remember, there really are no rules here. This is about what makes the most sense to you, what works for the space that you have, um, and what connects uh, you to really feeling great about working uh, in your altar space or with your altar. But generally speaking, uh, it is customary in the Wiccan tradition to orient your altar in the northern part of your space and facing north. North is a direction of a lot of power and energy. And being that this is your working altar where you're going to be getting stuff done, uh, it makes sense to set it up in a place of power. But if some other orientation really works for you, makes you feel powerful, um, perhaps you want to face the west so that in the evenings you can watch the sunset and use all of that solar energy to drive the power in your spells then go ahead and set up your altar in the west and face it in a western direction. Totally up to you. But it is customary in the Wiccan tradition to set up your altar uh, in the north uh, and facing north. The next custom is to put your representations of the elements on the altar oriented in the direction in which they actually sit. So for example, whatever you're using to represent the element of earth, which connects to the direction of north, you would place uh, on your altar in the direction of north. Kind of regardless of where your altar was set up, you would determine where north is and you would set your representation in the north. Your representation of air would go in the east, of fire to the south, and of water to the west. Your representation of spirit would usually be oriented in the center. So if you are working with a picture of a pentacle or a pentacle tile, then you would place that in the middle of the altar. Many witches place this right in the center of the empty space that they've left to work with because a lot of times um, it might feel really powerful and appropriate to place your spell items on top of your pentacle, either when you're cleansing them or when you're casting your spells. Another Wiccan tradition is to orient the altar in a way that designates sort of an area for uh, representations that connect to goddess energy and an area that holds the representations that connect to god energy. Typically, the left is seen as the feminine energy side of things while the right is seen as the masculine energy side of things. So all of your tools and elements that represent feminine energy, such as your water, your chalice, or your bell, would all go on the left side of your altar. Your representations of masculine energy or your tools that connect with God energy, such as your athame, your bowling, and your wand, would all go on the right side of your altar. And the items that connect to spirit, like I said before, such as your pentacle, would go in the center of your altar. And finally, we have candles. 
Candles are important uh, in magical practice because not only do they represent fire in a very literal way, um, but the lighting of a candle is in many ways considered sort of a beacon for spiritual energy. And so most of the rituals that you conduct or the spell work that you conduct will either include the lighting of candles or uh, it will make sense to have candles lit in order for you to welcome spirit energies of any kind into your space and invite them to be involved in the working that you're trying to do. It is a common Wiccan tradition to have uh, a candle that represents goddess energy and that gives honor to the goddess and a candle that represents God energy and gives honor to the God. In Wiccan tradition, typically the goddess candle is a silver candle and the god candle is a gold candle. And the silver candle would be oriented on the left or in the western side of the altar with all of the other items that connect to goddess energy. And the gold candle would be placed on the right with all of the other representations and tools that connect to god energy. So now that we've talked about choosing items for your altar, choosing tools for them, and how you would wanna lay those tools out, I just wanna give you a couple of pointers to keep in mind for working with your altar. Whether it's permanent or temporary, large or small, again, I just wanna repeat the significance of this space. This space is not just an area that serves the same mundane purposes of the other areas of your life. This is a special place. It's a sacred place and it should be treated that way. So do take care to keep your altar space clean, free from debris, and to treat all of the items that are within it with reverence and respect. The next tip that I wanna give you is of the importance of cleansing any items before they are put to use on your altar. So whether we're talking about candles or a new athame, um, a crystal or some other magical item, um, if you are buying something at the Botanica, the supermarket, ordering online, etc., cetera, and uh, you've now got that item, you really don't want to just put it on your altar. Energetic frequencies can be absorbed by physical items. So it's important to cleanse and clear that item before you put it to use on your altar. Now, you might want to cleanse and clear that item on your altar, and that's totally fine. But before you put it to use, before you start lighting that candle during ritual or using your athame to cast circle, you would want to have cleansed it. It is traditional to use the five elements to cleanse items, spaces, and your person uh, in the Wiccan tradition, but cleansing something simply by holding it over some uh, burning cleansing herb smoke or sprinkling it with salt water uh, can also be sufficient. So uh, cleansing can be as complex or as simple of a process as what works for you. Whatever process you choose, just uh, make sure that every time you get a new magical item that you want to live on your altar, that you cleanse it first. And then finally, I would just say that if you are going to set up an altar, uh, not only should it be sacred and not only should it be a cleansed space full of cleansed items, but it should be a place where you work. Um, if you set up an altar and then just neglect it and let it catch dust uh, and you just set it up for the sake of having one, really, you probably just shouldn't bother. An altar, particularly your working altar, is there for that reason specifically, to get work done on it. And as you continue to work your altar, as you cast spells, as you work rituals, as you celebrate the sabbats or give honor to various deities, uh, you will continue to add your energy into that altar. And every item will become more and more spiritually significant as you work with it. My altar for me is a very powerful place. I can cleanse the energy of an item simply by taking that item and placing it on my pentacle in my altar. 
That's because for me, there is a strong vibrating energy bubble that exists around my altar that has been building up for years and from constant practice, worship, devotion, and execution of magical works. So whether your altar fits inside an Altoid can or is you know huge and complex, it shouldn't be created just for the sake of having it or just to sit and look pretty. It should be a place of honor, but most importantly, a place of action. So if you're watching this video because you are planning to create an altar or you've set one up and you're interested in uh, seeing whether or not it sort of gels with the Wiccan traditions or you want to turn your altar into a Wiccan tradition, you know, whatever the reason is that has brought you to um, this video, you're probably somewhere uh, in the process of creating or having an altar. And I just want to say I'm really, really excited for you. Creating your altar, especially if this is your first one is something that is so much fun and if it isn't fun and it feels like work and pressure and it's stressing you out stop <laughs> stop hold on pump the brakes this should be a really enjoyable part of your magical practice um, your altar should not be a place where you're enforcing a bunch of rules or expectations or trying to create something that matches somebody else's it should be a genuine place where you can express yourself as a magical person and feel yourself grow and get stronger in your practice of witchcraft as you grow in your magical practice your altar is going to change like i said mine used to be a sheet under my bed um the altar that i have behind me is you know the fourth or fifth incarnation of my altar and i have big plans this year to make some pretty key changes to it so it's going to always grow and always change with you not only that, as you grow in your magical practice, you will more likely than not grow beyond your altar um, to having more than one. You might have altars around your home that are specifically for honoring certain deities. You might set up an ancestral altar somewhere in your space. You might have altars that are temporary that are set up just to celebrate certain sabbats or to represent certain seasons. Um, all of these things are possible. Um, an altar is a special spiritual place and what you make of it from there is really entirely up to you. So it's a great journey it's a fun journey it's an important part of your spiritual development and of course if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you went ahead and clicked on the like button if you have any comments or questions just leave them for me down below and of course subscribe 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 click on the bell button so you're notified every time a new video comes out you can follow me on instagram at bronxwitch and i will see you in the next video blessed be